Right now, President Joe Biden has been criticized for the impact withdrawing from Afghanistan is having on women. Now joining us to talk about her recent piece, The Phony Feminism of America's War Cheerleaders, is Natalie Schur, columnist at The New Republic. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Adrian. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us. So we're ending a 20 year war that's really quite imperial as it is. Why is this a disaster for feminists? Well, I think that feminists want to claim that we were in Afghanistan for feminist reasons or that there is a feminist justification for war. Uh, and I, I just don't think that's the case. I think that we can simultaneously see what's going on in Afghanistan and be very dismayed by the reality there for women and girls and want to support them uh, in terms of you know, getting visas to uh, be refugees, allow as many in as possible and really apply a lot of pressure for that kind of thing, uh, donate to organizations that are working on the ground. Uh, but I don't think that there's anything feminist about war or conflict itself. Yes, no, it definitely wouldn't seem to be the case, uh, especially when there are a lot of ulterior motives swirling around. And I know you don't think it was good or it's good to necessarily leave Afghanistan at this point in time. Uh, but I guess, what are your thoughts on how the US should be proceeding? Well, I think that it's important that the US does leave Afghanistan. Uh, I think that we have been in there for 20 years. I don't think that we have improved the country. And I think it's folly to assume that we could have done that in the first place. Uh, I, I think that we should not have entered this war. Uh, and so in terms of you know how, how we should proceed, I think that an important part of the answer to that question is not presuming that we know best for the people there or that we can impose egalitarianism or feminism at gunpoint by staying. Um, and so I think that you know the most important thing to do now is to leave. Yes, it definitely seems that there is a lot of kind of this imperialistic colonial mindset um, going on. And as a result, people are suffering. And something the USA Today had said that you had noted, which was pretty poignant is, we can't make a country care about its own women. Only Afghanistan can do that. What are your thoughts? How did that resonate with you? I mean, I thought it was an incredibly condescending way to frame the problem. Uh, I, I don't think that the problem is that Afghanistan doesn't care about Afghan people. Uh, I think that you know the fact that we're leaving and that things aren't in a good position isn't because we care about Afghanistan's women more than Afghanistan cares about its women. I think that. If anything, that sort of thinking reflects that we might not have uh, internalized the lessons that we should be internalizing right now, which is that imperialism and 20 year occupations are not a good thing and cause a lot of problems and a lot of pain for the people affected by them. Yes, I would definitely agree with you on that. Now, also, it almost seems a little bit ironic, this whole notion that Afghanistan doesn't care necessarily about its women or mistreats its women, so to speak, when right here in the United States, you know, Roe v. Wade is potentially on the chopping block. We're seeing Texas pass legislation that essentially puts bounties out there for individuals who seek or get an abortion. And so I guess, is there any lesson that really can be learned here about maybe self-awareness for the United States? Well, I should certainly hope so. I think you're absolutely right that the United States is not a feminist utopia, that there are a lot of problems faced by women here in the United States. Uh, a lot of poverty is faced by women, poverty is very feminized, uh, a lot of oppression. And that's absolutely true for Afghanistan as well. And I think that Part of the problem here is that uh, you know any 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 form of oppression um, that is faced by anybody is likely to be disproportionately felt by women, uh, and that we can't have a trickle down version of liberation for these people. I think that goes for the United States that feminism should absolutely focus on the people at the bottom. Uh, to build power from the ground up. Uh, I think that's true for Afghanistan as well. And I think that uh, the attitude that we can impose feminism uh, at gunpoint and that we are in fact 
expert arbiters of what feminism is and what an egalitarian society should look like. I, I think that we have a lot to improve on uh, as far as that goes um, in, our, in our own country. And that uh, women in Afghanistan are probably best situated to develop culturally competent uh, structures on their own. And that that might be incredibly difficult, uh, but I don't think that imposing war on another people is going to help at all. And would you definitely say that the United States is essentially using uh, this purported idea of the advancement of women as an excuse for having been there for 20 years? Absolutely, I think that the feminist case for war in Afghanistan was very central to getting progressives uh, and liberals on board with the war. I think that were it not for that angle, were it not trumped up to the extent that it was over the course of the past 20 years, uh, I don't think that there would be as much liberal support um, or you know, there might at least be more pushback. Uh, I think that the ability of the war's architects to frame it as a progressive and righteous war uh, from that point of view has been quite damaging overall. Yeah, so definitely seems like there is this notion of kind of going over to save the people that saviorism is in play when it's clearly not necessarily objective at all. Um, and in terms of moving forward, where do you think this can go? Well, I think that we need to look at our engagement with other countries and assess our imperialist program overall. We are pulling out of Afghanistan and I think that's a good thing, but it's certainly not over. Um, as we know, there just, have just been drone strikes in the past week. Uh, we still have a military presence in dozens of countries throughout the world. We're involved in active combat in several. Uh, I think that we need to scale back on all of that. I think that we have to look broadly at the way that we have waged imperial war, especially since 9-11 over the past two decades, uh, how much money we've spent on it, how many people have died as a result, uh, the extent to which we dominate so many local societies, um, largely full of black and brown people too. Uh, I think it's very important to note that there's a very obvious racial component to the way that we have dominated so many countries in the world uh, violently. And I think that we need to really bring uh, an anti-imperialist message back to the center of the progressive movement more broadly. Yes, um, and how would you recommend that that be done while also bearing in mind the importance of feminist ideologies and ensuring that that is not lost from the progressive mindset? Oh, I certainly don't think that they are uh, in conflict at all. I think that you know those should be part of the same program. Uh, the way that I see feminism is that I want to end oppression. I think that women are often more oppressed than men are for a variety of reasons. Uh, but that's not to say that there's not a very significant amount of variation uh, among women that, you know, uh, the most privileged uh, white women in the United States, the most economically powerful women in the United States, uh, they certainly benefit from the same economic hegemony enjoyed by the United States that white men do. And that what we need to focus on is a ground up uh, fight against oppression. And that in some cases that is going to run up against the interests of uh, the richest white women in the United States. So I think anti-imperialism and dismantling uh, hegemonic structures at home and abroad are part of the same program. Absolutely, and it definitely seems to be something that uh, it'll it'll span uh, essentially borders and boundaries, uh, particularly given the wealth of individuals and wanting to maintain maintain that there is a certain hierarchy, whether it's class, race, definitely gender, so on and so forth. And so, in terms of getting people on board, getting people not to necessarily support these imperialistic wars, uh, and to do what's best for women everywhere, what would you suggest? Well, I think that building power from below is going to happen largely through work and you know 
basically building power so that we can face uh, people in power, uh, hegemons, bosses, um, politicians, things of that nature. Uh, so I think that that requires organizing. And I think that organizing in solidarity with people around the world is going to necessitate listening to what they're looking for, joining their fight and being supportive, but definitely letting them lead the way uh, as opposed to what we were doing in Afghanistan, which was basically trying to step out front and say that we've taken it from here. Excellent, thank you so much, Natalie, for joining us. And can you please tell the viewers where they can find more in terms of your work? Uh, absolutely, I'm on Twitter at Natalie Shirley, S-U-R-E-L-Y, uh, and I write a column at The New Republic every week. Thank you so much, Natalie, appreciate thank you being you so here. Much. Take care. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.